Good evening, everyone. My name is Sam, and on behalf of Book Soup, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us for tonight's event with Julia Kay in conversation with Sheena Wolf here to discuss My Life in Transition, a super late bloomer collection. We'll be hosting, yes, I was hoping one of you would hold it up, <laughs> which we do have signed copies of. Um, if you click the green button below, which I'll get to in a moment. So we'll be hosting more virtual events in the near future, and you can learn more about them on our website by signing up for our email newsletter, as well as following us on social media at BookSoup. You can also follow our Crowdcast page here, and you can see past events on our YouTube channel. Our next event is thurs next Thursday, February 25th, with Katie DiSabato in conversation with Eden Lepucky to discuss Katie's new novel, You Up. Tonight's event will end with a Q&A, and to submit a question, please use the Ask a Question button at the bottom of the screen. It's bottom to the left of the chat area. And if you see a question on the list you'd like for our speakers to answer, please click the Like button, and we'll try to answer as many questions as time will allow. And please also feel free to engage with each other in the chat area. Also, please support Book Soup and our authors tonight by purchasing a signed copy of tonight's featured book, which, like I said, you can do by clicking the green button right below the viewer screen. It will redirect you to our website, and it won't interrupt the conversation, so you can do that at any time. And with that said, let me introduce our guest for this evening. In conversation, guest Sheena Wolf is the Director of Comics and Acquisitions at Andrews McNeil Syndication. This is her dream job. She believes that comics are one of the most sophisticated storytelling formats around, and she has worked with cartoonists including Dana Simpson, Bill Amend, Steens, Olivia James, and Georgia Dunn. Thank you for being with us, Sheena. And our featured author tonight is Julia Kay, who is an award-winning artist and illustrator whose webcomic Up and Out has garnered hundreds of thousands of readers and wide critical praise. Her commitment to activism has led to collaborations with nonprofit organizations such as The Trevor Project and Trans Lifeline. Her work has appeared on Webtoon, Go Comics, BuzzFeed, and the Disney animated show Big City Greens. Julia lives in Los Angeles. And thank you so much for being with us tonight, Julia. And everyone else, thank you for joining us. Please sit back, relax, and enjoy the presentation. Hello. Hello. Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry about cats that you can see behind me. I keep shifting to try to block them. Um, so let's, let's start with... Um, Kind of the the big question that I always have because That's I work with answer. comics. Comic strips are really difficult to do. The format it's limited. It's three or four panels. It's not you know like it's just very constrained. Why did you decide to do this project in that format? Um, that's a great question. It's um just made sense at the time, I suppose. Um, time constraint wise, um, I really. I guess I should start back when I was making the comics that um, went into becoming Super Late Bloomer. Um, I was really early in my transition. Um, uh, I, you know, I was going through so many new experiences, navigating so so much, uh, so, like outward, externally, and going through society internally, trying to figure out um, who I was, who I wanted to be. Uh, how I identified uh, as a person, uh, eventually uh, settled on woman, uh, and there there was just so many feelings that I had constantly. Everything was just heightened, uh, just ten ten out of ten uh, on on a daily basis, and I felt singularly alone. I didn't know anybody that was trans. I wasn't close to anyone. Um, I I knew of a few figures. Uh, that existed in celebrity um distantly um and uh yeah i just didn't even know how to communicate to other people how uh i was feeling uh i didn't know how to communicate to myself uh you know after after a lifetime of suppression and repression and depression all, all of those all of those essions um i i just didn't know how to uh, to, to be honest with myself uh let alone to other people. And so as, as I was already a, a working cartoonist making um, gag comics online for the past few years, it um, seemed to make sense to um, just make a personal project out, out of it, um, to turn to um, autobiographical comics, to sort through my feelings on a daily basis, to step away from 
um, my day for just a short period, make it make a small project that I could um, like keep coming back to on a daily basis as art therapy uh, in a way. Um, and if, you know, if the, if I didn't make uh, really big constraints, restrictions to the format, uh, I, it, it would have spiraled out of control. I would have, uh, it would have gotten away from me. I would have stopped, you know, making comics. I, 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 it would have felt too overwhelming, uh, but three panels, three panels I can do. Uh, you know, uh, I, I, I learned uh, over the past uh, prior few years how to tell a joke, uh, do like the, the beats of a punchline. Uh, but this this was such a personal project that it's like oh I can issue I can issue that uh, like having to tell jokes uh, I was so tired of telling jokes uh, it was so freeing that uh, in in the space I could just be as honest uh, about my shouting into the void as as possible um, and and yeah uh, I'd, I'd always been like I you know uh, newspaper comics the the three three four panel uh, format was was so formative to me as a child reading newspaper comics uh, the like top to the top to bottom the newspaper comic section every day like it just it made so much sense to uh, it just it, it felt very natural um, uh, to to turn to that format um, and in, in the end uh, distilling my uh, complex emotions um, just to, like it, it helped me process in like to, to really hone in on what I was feeling on a daily basis and think of it in terms of me being a protagonist of my own life. Um, hi, hey, Julia, how, how are you feeling? Uh, and just, just let her, let her tell me. That's really cool. Um, so we're here to talk about the book. So is it different? So when you're thinking about creating these comics in the beginning, did you know that you wanted them to be a book? Like, was that always the end game or were they just like, what was the process there? Uh, for for both projects, Super Late Bloomer, as well as My Life in Transition, um, I had vague inklings that, you know, eventually I might feel comfortable uh, releasing to them to the public. Um, uh, with Super Late Bloomer, I certainly didn't have book aspirations. Uh, with with the, the the sequel, My Life in Transition, um, yeah, I like I, I'd be lying to say I didn't know that that, that could be a possibility. Um, but it was so important for me to not think of it in terms of a project, a, a product, uh, something that would be turned into a product. It it needed to truly be um, my diary. It needed to be something like the, the moment I start thinking uh, in terms of like a project that goes out to the public, I, you know, I'm like my internal editor is going to go on uh, after having created uh, content for the internet for so long. Like uh, it's hard to escape uh, the, the inner critic and um, like being, uh, trying to guess what the audience would want to try and uh, the moment I start thinking about it in terms of uh, a book, uh, I might not be as honest as I otherwise would be because throughout the book, I make a lot of mistakes uh, or not mistakes, but missteps uh, and uh, talk a lot about very personal uh, things that I have gone through. Um, and it really needs to be art therapy for me first and foremost. Um, so any, any aspirations of what it could become um, were pushed, uh, were compartmentalized, pushed aside, and uh, we're, we're sitting at the end of it all. Um, you know, after, after a few months had passed, I was able to, you know, um, finally come back to the project uh, and look it over and go, uh, okay, so what, what do I actually have here? Is this something that I think is A, worth putting out, B, uh, something that I think I want to put out and I'm comfortable putting out? Uh, and and all of that sort of thing. Um, so for the for the most part, uh, no, it's it's legitimately just my diary. Uh, I think you you got into some of what this next question is, is asking. But did making a book making a book go the way that you thought it would? Were there surprises? Were there things that you, <laughs> like you know like was it? Because I don't I sure. never made a book. I mean, yeah, uh, cer certainly. Um, 
no, nothing went as I imagined it. I was so lost at that point. Like the reason I started, I came back to making comics. I, after making Super Late Bloomer, I didn't think I was going to make comics. I, I was going to make another autobiographical comic at all. I, I, I was like, okay, I, I did this, but it was, I, I needed to vent. I needed to create, like this was created out of a necessity. Uh, and uh, it's, while I put a lot of love and effort into it, you know, in, in some ways it felt like a, a almost a fluke in that in that regard, you know. Uh, but with, with the with the second one, uh, you know, I, you know, I hit uh, around the three year mark of my transition, and I just recognized that I was in a new place in my life as far as my self acceptance with my identity and ge uh, gender expression and uh, the people that were in my life, my relationship. Uh, and just relationships to the people uh, around me, like everything was so, so new. I, I, I felt like a completely different version of myself. I had hit a, like a new plateau in my life that uh, I felt creating uh, comics to help, nav to help me navigate uh, felt really imperative. Um, and, you know, I honestly thought it was going to be mostly uh, reflections on gender uh, and, and sort of uh, in, in that vein, I certainly didn't uh, ex uh, fully conceptualize, you know, I was going to soon go through a breakup and, uh, and everything that happens after that. I, so much of it was just flailing around and hoping for the best. I mean, but that's how I live my life. So uh, that's, that's the most that you can do. Uh, I mean, five, five years ago, I never would have conceptualized that I was here now. So uh, nothing goes as planned, but uh, it seems to work out in the end. <laughs> um, I know that, so I know that between the first book and the second book, um, you mentioned this in the second book and for people, I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna like tell you what happens on the last page, people in the audience, don't worry. <laughs> the mystery will not be revealed in this conversation, but, um you you changed the way that you approach fashion um or that's something that you talk about in the book and also anybody who follows you on social knows that like your fashion is amazing literally audience the question that i have written down is a question that is just compliments about your fashion and then segues into <laughs> how do you approach fashion i just think it would be interesting um so like point one your fashion is amazing point two let's talk about that <laughs> Uh, <laughs> well, first, uh, thank you. Um, I I've really grown to uh, love the way that uh, something about like I don't know the presentation of clothes. Uh, like I don't know, you know, I grew up, uh, you know, um, not really comfortable myself, kind of disconnected from myself, uh, as you might imagine. Um, but also, I grew up in uh, like the third child of four of four siblings uh, of uh, four kids, and. Uh, you know, I, most of my clothes were hand-me-downs. I never got a chance to think about clothing uh, growing up, even even if I uh, had aspirations. Um, so, you know, as as I've grown older, uh, the the idea um, of of getting a chance to like you uh, utilize uh, expression of gender and clothing to emphasize uh, or de-emphasize what you want uh, is is just so powerful. Uh, the way that you can um, shape the way that people view you. Um, and it's, it's, it's really fascinating to me that, you know, um, early, early on in transition, like I did not know anything uh, about women's clothing and like, you're just kind of jumping into the deep end with all of it. I mean, like there's like, as far as like discovering, I, I found anyway, discovering like what you want to wear and how you want to uh, express yourself versus um, styles that you saw when you were like uh, formative years uh, in your like your teens and whatever ways that you would have wanted to dress but couldn't. Uh, so like you, you have like this mishmash of so many uh, ideas of like the way that you want to present yourself. But like at, at, at the core of it, like it's just like, oh, cool, clothes, 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 clothes. Uh, I, I, I want to try everything. I, I want to uh, I, I just, I just want to try everything. Like, like it's kid in a candy shop going to, uh, going to, um, like, uh, uh, just any, any old store. Um, it, it, it felt so freeing to just wear any, uh, feminine clothing. Um, you know, looking back, uh, I definitely made a lot of questionable choices because I didn't understand really how to, uh, create, um, uh, the shapes with my body. Like, I didn't understand, like, the proportions of my body. Like, it's the sort of thing that, like, 
most cis people figure out in their teens uh, with their cohorts. Uh, and that's like, you know, you, you go through awkward phases of style and dress and then like you kind of work out like clothes that you want to wear uh, as, as you grow phase out of that. As a, um, a woman who came into her own in her late 20s, it's a, it's a lot uh, to figure out on your own, certainly. Um, in like, I don't know, it, it's, it's, it's so fascinating to me that the, the, you know, there are the, so many pressures that are placed upon uh, trans women externally and internally of like wanting to present feminine uh, in many cases, in my case, certainly, um, you know, not all cases, um, but also feeling like yeah, juxtaposed with feeling like you need to, uh, you know, like leaving the box that you were constrained in before, and now you're jumping into this just other box marked girl and like hoping, uh, hoping to God that people interpret you as such. Uh, and so leaning on uh, stereotypical uh, expressions of femininity becomes a lifeline in so many ways, uh, regardless of whether uh, one may want it or not. And I, I, I certainly felt that so so intensely and to, i mean still still do to some extent um uh, that's that's hard to escape um and you know as as you as transition progressed uh you know a, a, a couple years went by and suddenly i i stopped feeling as much of a need i like i wanted to rebel against that i wanted to push back it's like i don't need to constantly be wearing dresses i, I can wear what i want i started going through more of a you know a edgy cool goth sort of sort of phase for for a while um and i dug this out of my closet and like it just so happens that's that's the vibe tonight i guess um and um yeah eventually it kind of settled in like i'm, I'm like five years in now and i i'm much more comfortable just wearing what i want uh that i honestly wear dresses more often than not just because i i like cloth tubes it's very simple it's very easy uh and i i i, I like feeling feminine like it's less of a, a pushback less of a response to that um and you know throughout it all um like god i don't know like there's so many facets to it because like again like so so many of us end up feeling a need to really key in on performing femininity to the utmost uh, and certainly, like, that was a huge factor in my learning so much about fashion and makeup and um, just, you know, not wanting to be perceived any of, in, in a different way than you actually are. So much of it was, like, uh, you know, a response to anxiety. Uh, it's, it's really wonderful now. I, I really appreciate it uh, now that I don't have so many of those anxieties, now that, like, uh, I, I am so much more comfortable in my body and my uh, overall expression and uh, understanding of what I like to wear, uh, that I, I feel so many, so much less pressure to perform in ways that I, uh, in ways other than I would, you know, on, on my own, if, you know, just grabbing stuff out of my closet. Um, yeah, I, I, it's, it's a really cool, that uh, that's, I don't know if it's a skill, but like, I don't know, it's really cool having that in my arsenal. Like, I, I legitimately love clothes and like the, the way that uh, it, it really just changes people's perceptions and your own perception of like how you, how you see yourself uh, and move through this world. It's incredible. I think that answered the question. I don't know. No, I, I think it definitely <laughs> answered the question. Also, my reaction is always to say no. <laughs> when I'm reacting to something, no, absolutely, which is a very Midwestern <laughs> thing because you just start saying all of like it's meaningless. It's I just, all it's it's just, filler words. It's just vomit. It's just at this. I could I could give a whole TED talk on. <laughs> I think anyone who's ever put on like a really cool jacket has experienced that whole like, ooh, is this the thing? Like, is this? Um, so I, I thought that you answered the question very well. Um, your work is. You've done funny work. You've done super personal work. Obviously, this is on the super personal side. Um, I have I have noticed that I think you became a meme for a second on Twitter. Like they they had done I guess I'll live and it was you going like this, <laughs> which was amazing. Um, so <laughs> um, you have this really wonderful fan base, and I see you interacting with them on on social. Um, what? No, uh, I mean, like, I just, oh, I, I like to watch the Twitter interactions because <laughs> it's it's cool. It's interesting to to see 
that's my window into the outside world now, you know, like I don't I see real people. So I see Twitter people. Um, but what, so did, did that relationship with your readers change when your work changed? Because I think it's one thing to, to interact with fans who are, who are looking at work that you're doing that is like funny punchline panel stuff versus interacting with people who are reading about your life. So what, what has that been like? Absolutely. I did not have any relationship with my audience for years uh, in, into making like gag strips. Um, um, <laughs> you know, you, you create a gag strip, uh, you, you put it online and people tag their friends or share it with their friends. And that's wonderful. They, they, uh, it's nice seeing them uh, get a kick out of, out of what you got, uh, what you're putting out there. But that was the long, the, 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 the beginning and end of it in so, so many regards. Um, uh, I was not a, I was not a person. I was not an entity. I was, you know, this, uh, I felt like to me, I was like just this content creation machine, uh, that just spits out, uh, absurd, uh, sometimes funny comics, sometimes ones that make sense. Um, but yeah, the, the relationship, honestly, uh, I'm, I mean, I'm glad I didn't really have much of a relationship, uh, because so like I built so much of my fan base from like, uh, came over from Reddit and that sort of thing. Uh, kind of toxic. Uh, people, people uh, don't uh, ooh, bad. Um, but uh, what I think is interesting, like I, it was very purposeful to me to um, not be a part of my work. I wanted to distance myself from my work so much uh, at that point because I was depressed and I didn't know myself. I didn't know how to express um, to my to what I was feeling um about really anything um you know so I, I was making the the content that i made i made hundreds hundreds of comics um uh that were absurd and like i, I just wanted them to not exist in this reality i wanted them as far removed from reality as i was capable of honestly um i honestly don't know if i could create that kind of content now uh i don't know if i want to um and it, it's it's really fascinating to me that like as i came to um accept myself and understand myself better um, around like 2015 when like I started like really grappling with the idea of who I was and oh yeah my gender is actually different than um, I was uh, told oops um, I started inserting myself into my comic uh, as as a character uh, primarily in the, the strips I made for webtoon for a good year or so um, and you know as i came to better understand myself i became more and more of a focus uh and i started tra like uh, transitioning my character over over a period of time uh, eventually came out um and coming out um as as julia really w was a uh what, watershed moment is that is that a phrase i think it is uh well like it is. for me it's a um phrase. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so many, so many uh, people came out of the woodwork. Uh, so many LGBTQ uh, people um, from like comics readers and uh, creators came out of the woodwork uh, to uh, just be really excited for me. And um, like, uh, just it, it was just night and day. Like um, seeing the way that um, how how wholesome um, the an audience could be. And when I started making uh, putting out. Uh, doing a 180 from uh, absurdist comics to really honest, raw, uh, autobiographical work. Um, you know, I was, I was putting myself out there in such a vulnerable way. Uh, I'm, I'm so I'm so gratified that um, <laughs> that uh, it, it's as safe as like I I don't feel like I'm fighting against a tide, tidal wave of uh, people. Uh, who are transphobic or just being really shitty to me, uh, even about things that I mess up on. Like uh, when when I when I post like sad uh, or downer topics, people relate to it and are, are grateful uh, for the solidarity. Um, and it's it's wonder it's so wonderful to be able to interact with that. I I find it personally healing and wonderful to know that um, things that I've gone through, um, I I'm not alone in. Um, and it's. I, I just I can't understate just like just how wholesome and wonderful my my audience is. There's there's so they're so sweet and so pure, <laughs> and hearing hearing about the way that uh, my work has helped so many people, um, both both cis and trans in in various ways, um, 
in in the things that both have to do with gender and don't um like has has been just so wonderful uh my 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 world is so full of life because of it and honestly um a a, a great number of my my close friendships now um uh, came came out of um audience uh, or fan fan interactions uh, in one way or another people people reaching out to me and uh at certain certain points in my life and I don't know. Friendships just happen to grow through that. Uh, my, my two of my closest friends <laughs> were, were were fans that reached out, and it's 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 beautiful. It's beautiful. That um that actually is a great transition into my next question. So you have an incredible support system. They feature in the comic. Um, <laughs> do you have any advice for people who are struggling to connect? especially now, but you know, anytime on how to find their people and build these relationships. And the advice cannot be write a couple of highly personal autobiographical <laughs> comics and then first, interact with your fans and yeah, then yeah. become friends with those people. First, so first not the, that, uh, but do you have giant. other additional advice about how? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So start, start with a platform. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. They're, they're like, I, it's incredible just how accessible it is, uh, like, uh, community to find communities nowadays. Uh, if you're willing, you have to be willing to put yourself out there, certainly. Um, but Discord has been such an incredible, uh, way for people to find each other. Uh, I'm part of a, a few Discord servers myself, and they're just full of sweeties. Uh, like, they're like, if you're LGBTQ, you know, like, you, you can search via by, by topic hobbies uh you can find like uh you know uh, queer gamers <laughs> you know uh and like if one one server you don't feel particularly connected with uh may, maybe the the transgender socialists uh will uh be the one that you connect with um it's it's kind of beautiful but you know uh my my advice definitely is coming from somebody who is a nerd at heart and uh all, all of my friendships have started on the internet and eventually graduated to being uh in person uh as as time has gone by so i you know i value um all, all of my friendships and relationships uh in in those sort of regards very equally um but um or or um you know there, there's so many communities uh and uh, subsets of um like twitter and um other other social media platforms that you can certainly find camaraderie uh, and uh, interact with people uh, about hobbies that you may have, or or just find solidarity um, uh, about any number of topics. It's it's kind of incredible just how accessible it is nowadays. Yeah, I feel like a real turning point in our friendship was when we got Froyo and talked about board games and probably Battlestar Galactica or something like that. Oh my God! Yeah, in Bethesda. Yeah. But yeah, so it was supposed to be a talk about comics, and then it was like, let's talk about science fiction for an hour. Um, <laughs> um, have there been any reactions to your books that surprised you, either in a good or a bad way? Oh, for sure. Um, that, <laughs> um, I, I, I don't know that I've seen it in a bad way. Oh, mm, mm. That's, that's an interesting uh in, in a great way uh yeah sure i i've certainly had people that were uh self-proclaimed uh transphobes in the past that read my work and uh it helped them to uh understand that uh trans people are just people that there's nothing uh, that there's no devious uh 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 there's no other <laughs> ulterior motive i'm um, you know uh and you know and all the other negative stereotypes that uh, are far too pervasive today still um is that like that that's just incredible uh as, as uh, the, on the negative side of things uh certainly uh I, I i find it really fascinating that um super late bloomer um i well i i make a point of trying to not over explain myself in my work i don't want to do trans one one I, I never want to hold people's hands. I don't want to explain what cisgender means. I don't want to explain what, I don't want a glossary of, uh, of terminology. I make my comics, uh, my content, uh, you know, it was for myself. So for trans people by, uh, by a trans woman, 
Um, and, you know, um, I think it's really wonderful that uh, cis allies uh, connect with it as well. Um, but it's, it's really fascinating to see that, um, you know, uh, definitely uh, transphobes and uh, trans exclusionary radical feminists have certainly uh, perused uh, Super Late Bloomer, for instance. And what they see, because I don't go out of my way to explain my feelings in, in, uh, in throughout the book um, or over explain ever, like I don't hold their hand. Um, they basically their negative assumptions about trans women are confirmed because so much of the book, uh, its themes have to deal with um, anxiety regarding um, expression of gender, the way that people perceive you and not feeling like you're being uh, perceived the way that you want to. Uh, and so, so much of it is focused on, you know, makeup and clothing and, uh, uh, and very like what, what they would, uh, perceive as, um, you know, uh, a man, uh, uh, co-opting femininity. Uh, like it, it like it, 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 uh, seems to confirm their suspicions of, uh, of trans women not actually being women. Um, so it's certainly uh, negative, negative there, but that's in a far minority. Um, I just think it's it's super fascinating to see that's like, oh, okay, yeah, that's mm, that's something that exists. But you know, if you if you go into it with a, a, a transphobic mindset, uh, you, 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 they, they were looking to confirm their suspicions, I guess. Uh, right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, like it, it's been really wonderful to see the reception of. Um, my uh, the the previous endeavor, Super Late Bloomer, as well as um, seeing um, so many wonderful, heartfelt uh, responses to my life in transition, and how uh, my my work has helped people recognize themselves uh, and embolden them to come out to the people in their own lives. Um, and <laughs> one of my favorite uh, little uh, tidbits was hearing from um, a school librarian who was frustrated that she, that the school had to keep on ordering a copy of Super Late Bloomer because um, kids kept stealing it, which is, you know, sad in a way because like they, they felt like they, 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 you know, they did had, there wasn't, a, there was such a dearth of, uh, there was such a need for uh, uh, trans related content that they, they had, they felt a need to hoard it for themselves. Yeah. Uh, but there's something really pure about that, but, like that they smuggled it out and like needed to like read it in secret. Like that's, that's, that's so beautiful. And also that the school kept reordering it. And they kept reordering it. It's incredible. Uh, and like recently, um, the, there's this, me there's this uh, medical school that uh, is using Super Late Bloomer as uh, this, this elective on trans health is uh, using Super Late Bloomer as required reading um, for better understanding um, and being empathetic with uh, trans uh, patients, which is, is it's so incredible to see the way that uh, that my work has made ripples and will continue to do so. Yeah, I think um, one of the things that I really appreciate about your work, and this is not a question, this is just a comment, um, comment away. is um, you, like the stuff that you're writing about, like you're always, you know, there's a lot of anxiety, but you're never apologetic. And I feel like that's so important because I think that the kinds of people who are looking to find problems with other people really want you to be apologetic. Like they want to see something in you that says, I'm not sure I should be doing this. And then that is where they're like, you shouldn't, it's the worst. And there's nothing like that. Like there's no purchase in your work for that whatsoever. And I think that's incredibly important because there is, there shouldn't be like, there's nothing in there. And it's just like, you are going through a thing and you are taking people with you. And that's so powerful and important. Um, and also like, it's something that I've run into, like in my work, when I work with other cartoonists, when they're trying to figure out how to introduce certain things into the comic, um, like gay characters or non-binary characters. And, and the way that I have always encouraged people to do it is just do it and do it. Like they're supposed to be there because they are supposed to be there. And then don't allow for any doubt that somebody's going to push back because it doesn't matter. Sure. Um, this yeah. is the world. Like this is a reflection of the world. That's fascinating. I I think that's a really interesting insight, and I think that plays directly into the um, the the concept that you know I you know I w I wasn't making it for an audience, which is partially why I felt free to to do that uh, to to so fearlessly just 
state, uh, you know, what, what I was going through. Um, so, so I just put things out there so bluntly. Uh, they, like, they, they didn't need to, like, I, I allowed myself within the constraints of my sketchbook to, to just be fully honest with myself in, in, in all of its, you know, ugly, ugly glory in, in some cases, you know, it's, uh, what, what, what's the, what's, if it's just for me, what's the point of lying? You know, what's the point of, like, dancing around it or being apologetic? Yeah. Um, so when you I, were doing it... <laughs> What was your process? What is what is the art question? Like, how did you make this comic? What's your what's your creative process? How do you do it? <laughs> um, your okay. <laughs> uh, what kind of pen do you use? Um, I uh, the I mean the nuts and bolts of it. Uh, I uh, did it all traditionally, um, and you know then scan them and you know clean them up and whatever a little bit here and there. But uh, I did it with a sketchbook. Um, pencil and uh, 0.3 micron, uh, lots of them, just endless supply of them because they die real fast. Um, but the, per, but in particular, uh, the sketchbook itself um, needed to be small enough uh, that I could carry it around wherever I went um, because I needed, you know, there, there was no guarantee that I was going to have time or energy at the end of the day, every day to be able to work on something. Or maybe I'd fall like, you know, half a day behind and I need to play catch up at lunch uh, and use my lunch hour to make a comic. So like I needed to always be able to have my supplies on hand, um, and as far as like uh, idea generation, um, I would I make notes uh, in my notes app on my phone throughout the day. Um, anything anything that stood out to me as uh, emotionally interesting, um, little, little snippets of conversation that I thought. Um, May, that resonated with me and like I wanted to chew like mentally chew on for a while um, when, whenever there's a, the, a conversation more often than not um, it's you know word for word it's a it's a quote um, that actually just it's just a, a record of something that was actually said um, um, and um, you know uh, so often like uh, three panels is a very restrictive format to be able to distill ideas and concepts down to. So uh, very often it would become a game of um, just having to make a hard decision of like what was actually the most impactful thing that I want to sit with for a while. Because, um, uh, you know, uh, some days I feel like there's nothing going on and that, that would be a little, that'd be a little tricky um, to like kind of sift below the mundanities of life to see um, sometimes the, like that's that there's something interesting about like just nothing happening in a day and oh, what's the emotional core of that uh, but yeah so often there'd be like you know four or five things that I really wanted to talk about um, and uh, just having to make a gut decision um, it was such a fast-paced project um, to, needing to sit down every single day for six months it was such a marathon that there couldn't be too much second-guessing um, it's, it becomes super arduous, um, uh, the, the, to, to be like a few weeks in and then realize that you still have like five and a half months to go. Uh, it, it gets better over time after like the first like three, two or three weeks, you're like, okay, this is, this is a habit. This is part of my life now. Uh, this is just what I do. I, I have an hour, an hour and a half every day that like just is immobile. It needs, this needs to happen on a daily basis. Uh, but Granted, it would be really, it was really crushing when uh, I got three three uh, months in, you know, ninety days worth, and realizing that I still had, uh, I was half over, but I still had another uh, three months worth of comics to make. Uh, just the sheer the sheer exhaustion of um, creating content like this uh, was <laughs> it was so much it was so much um, yeah, worth it worth it um, I think. Um, I'm, I'm really, I'm so glad to have a record of this time because my memory is crap, quite frankly. And uh, it's, you know, it's a great way to like, to, I, my, my memories of this time period are so vivid now. It's, it's wild. Um, um, but yeah, um, yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of it. Um, sometimes I like taking the, the mund mundane or sometimes like, uh, there'll be like a, a different concept per like in each panel. Uh, and then, like, I'll string them together with uh, what, what's the thematic core of this. I don't know. Uh, after after you're doing it day day in day out for 
months on end, um, you, you, you start playing around with the format more and more um, and uh, keep it keep it interesting for yourself. We actually, so <clears throat> there are a couple of questions in the chat and one of them was about your creative process. And so since you just answered that question, I think you've mostly gotten it, but I'm gonna go ahead and read it because yes. just in case like there's part of it that we missed. Um, so Ali asked, what was your creative process like throughout the creation of the project? Would you set time each day to reflect and decide what to focus on? Or would there be topics or events that you would take more time to reflect on before exploring it in your art? Um, I wish I could say that like I, I did uh, take more like I, I there, that there were cases in which I would take more time. Um, but, you know, the, the fast pace of life, they, like they never <laughs> there was never enough time. Um, it, occasionally I'd fall a day behind just because you know, life, life would get in the way, but like, I, at the very least, always create thumbnails, um, like a really quick, you know, um, take a, take a minute out of my day to like, uh, create the, the rough idea of the visuals. So I'd have something to work off of the next day and then be like, uh, then realize, you know, okay, I guess I've got to block out three, three hours tomorrow, uh, or cut into sleep or something. Cause I, I need to keep on going. Um, yeah, there, there was never any, uh, I can't think of any events that happened that I felt a need to really sit with. Um, at the very least, like, yeah, there, there was never any opportunity to because it was such a mad dash. Yeah, and then there's another question in the chat that I'm gonna ask you now because I want you to have space to answer it. And then okay. if if it turns out that we still have a little more time then I still have a couple more questions or people can add more in the chat. Oh yeah. But, um, okay, so Maeve has asked, do you have any advice on overcoming internalized misogyny? As a burgeoning trans woman, it's something really stopping me from progressing. That's a really big question. Internalized misogyny. Um, I get like that's, a, that's such a broad question. I'm not actually sure where to go with that. Internalized misogyny. Uh, therapy. Uh, uh, honestly, therapy has played. Uh, I mean, my therapist uh, appears a few times in um, my life in transition. Um, I, I go on a weekly basis. Um, I, I find it immensely helpful to um, uh, to to become cognizant of the the thought patterns that I the, the traps that I would fall into, um, and through the repetition week in week out of uh, of verbalizing these um, hurdles, these emotional and mental hurdles, blocks that I needed to get over um, was, uh, it, it was immensely uh, important uh, as opposed to, you know, otherwise like I would just go round and round in my circles in, in my head. Um, it, it, I, I personally find externalizing um, these sort of thoughts very, very useful, a uh, useful tool. Um, and then, uh, you know, uh, over over time, like, you know, it's one step forward, two steps back, uh, you, you do the best you can. And eventually you look back and you're like, Oh, wow, I've progressed quite a bit. Making sure there isn't more questions. Okay, so those are the questions from the chat so far. If people have more questions, please feel free to click on that ask the question link and then add them there. <clears throat> um, okay, so now I'll go back to my, my canned questions that you've seen before. You've had time to prepare. What? No. <clears throat> it's fine. It's what? fine. It's no, good to be is, able to prepare for things. This is it's an honest, uh, flowing <laughs> conversation. What? It can be both of those things. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are no gotchas. Um, what's the best advice you've ever received? Or what advice do you have for artists who are struggling with their work? Um, <laughs> uh, the, the rule, rule one, uh, don't stop. Rule two, keep going. Uh, that, that's, that's it. Uh, <laughs> all, all, all you can do, as, like the, the best way to progress as an artist is to just repetition, keep on going. Um, uh, rec recognizing where you want to be uh, with your arts and uh, recognizing where your weaknesses are you can you can always fo like uh focus on your fundamentals draw from life uh if you want to if you want to get better at drawing backgrounds uh say say uh with trees go go out and draw some trees uh if you want to get better at people uh do anatomy studies on a daily basis uh, you know um just just keep on going um and be comfortable with making bad things 
don't don't expect to make great art. I think that's the biggest uh, roadblock to creating art. Uh, just just create it. I don't know. Uh, be be comfortable with it uh, being uh, bad, maybe. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Uh, n- nobody nobody gets good at anything right off the bat. Some people don't. I mean, okay, the concept of good is arbitrary. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like you can absolutely. do stuff for a really long time and it can still not be where you want it to be, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't have value. Yes. That is me speaking as an editor versus yes. me speaking well as said. an interviewer. Well said. Uh, we have another question. Um, oh, uh, a, a person asks, I work in a public library. Would you recommend this book and Super Late Bloomer to be shelved in the young adult section or adults? Young adult. I think it's imperative for um, for younger people to see him. Um, I, I know Super Late Bloomer, in, uh, I, I can speak from experience just uh, because it's been out for a few years now, has um, become a staple at like many um, uh, grade school libraries um, and is very uh, applicable to them. And I think um, as far as um, uh, my life in transition, which does deal with, um, you know, some things with, uh, you know, me dating as, you know, a 30 year old woman, um, I think that it's still relatable and important for young people to see that being trans, that you can still have a future, that you can exist within society, you can find acceptance. Um, I went out of my way to, uh, you know, I, I did editing uh, posts, uh, like I, I cut out things that, um, that uh, some, some strips that uh, I, I thought were either too adult or uh, just, um, uh, just didn't fit tonally with uh, the, the rest. And um, I, um, uh, I censored uh, any of the uh, swears, uh, you know, I toned them down. Uh, so, uh, I think there's maybe two direct uh, spoken references to the word sex, uh, but nothing that has to do with it. It's, yeah, uh, it's relevant and uh, appropriate for young adults. Okay, and then we have um, another question from Kai Willis. Who are some artists who inspire you? Um, first and foremost, you know, um, I live in a, you know, um, it's quarantine and I, uh, I live in a big old house with uh, a couple in- just incredibly talented artists. Uh, and so I see them day in, day out and we share a, a working space, have a little studio, uh, we call our house pal house. Uh, and my housemate, Dave, uh, Dave Mercier, uh, is an incredibly talented cartoonist of, uh, the comic work works, uh, as well as, uh, live with yourself on webtoon. Um, and, uh, Shanti Richards, uh, is uh, just, uh, just honestly the most powerful artist that I, I know of, uh, <laughs> they're, they're so, so flipping good. Um, you know, an art director, been an art director at Google, uh, working, working on a personal graphic novel right now that I'm very, very excited about. Um, um, other, other artists, um, pseudonym Jones creates incredible comics, um, Hannah Vardit, um, Lucci Byron, um, Maddie G, M A D Y, uh, last name is just the letter G. Um, trans, trans Mask creates incredible comics. Um, Lake Fama creates wonderful comics about uh, autobiographical work about being uh, trans masculine. Uh, ooh, Sage Coffee. Um, the, last name c-o-f-f-e-y uh their their work is incredibly personal and um just just so so good so, so many so many com- uh, there's so, I, I i i could keep going but i should I'll, I'll, I'll put a cap on it there um i i follow so many artists <laughs> there's so much there's so much out there it's incredible and just in case you're not following Julia, the chat on the right, um, oh. there's great reactions to all of all of the people that you've named. Yeah. Um, okay, so I think we have ten minutes left. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask one more question, and then if anybody thinks of another question they want to ask, put it in the chat. Um, the ask a question chat, not the general chat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so Julia. 
There's Hello. there's a pandemic. There was a winter storm for a part of the country. Like we're just in escalating, like it's like an onion of disasters. Mm -hmm. How mm -hmm. how are you doing? Like how are you handling it? Both like, are you okay? And do you have any tips for the rest of us? So that is that is my statement question. Goodness, yeah, that onion that onion is an apt uh, uh metaphor. Uh just let's cut into that and let's shed some tears. Uh, I don't know anybody that's not depressed, honestly. And like, I, I, I've got, I've got a wonderful living situation. I am uh, very privileged and fortunate to have steady work. Um, I've been, you know, working at Disney on big city greens. I work in the animation industry and it's entirely migrated to working from home, um, throughout, throughout all of this. Um, and I live in a house, uh, in which, you know, there's enough uh, space that we're not all, uh, stepping on each other's toes uh emotionally or physically uh and we're all uh i love them i love them the bits um so as, as far as you know it, it feels pretty best case scenario because i do have people to, to converse with and talk with and like other artists that you know i love um but it's it's really hard um i i finally feel like i have come into my own as as a woman, as Julia, I, I feel more confident than I have ever felt in my life. I love how I look and feel in my body. Um, I want to exist as a person in society. <laughs> I, I I finally got into a place of self acceptance and just and have so many wonderful friends that I want to you know, uh, exist in their life, I, in their lives. I, there's so much that I haven't experienced. Uh, you know, I, my life was, uh, very passive, um, before transition. Um, I just kind of went with where life took me, um, which, you know, it did take me around the country and whatever, but still, like, I didn't feel like I was ever really living my life. I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to be a person. Um, so now that, like, I feel capable of all that, you know, Jared, we're now, uh, Feel like a, an animal that's in too small of a cage, just pacing back and forth. Um, while uh, so many things continue to go wrong, um, I, I do feel hopeful for you know the the, the vaccine as as it uh, slowly but surely uh, is rolling out. Um, it, it feels like light at the end of the tunnel in regard to the pandemic at the very least, which I'm you know they're very hopeful for. Um, I do live with two couples and they're very happy and loving and uh, that's wonderful. Uh, I am in, I am uh, terminally single, um, which isn't great for me. Uh, anytime, Sheena, anytime the, there's any PDA, uh, it's a hate crime towards me specifically. <laughs> I'm not laughing at you. <laughs> no, 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 it's very, it's it's, very, it's very funny. funny. <laughs> it's very funny uh, in an outward way, but you know. Uh, so, you know, you, you, you do what you can. I, I, I've definitely made my excursions into the dating world over the past year um, to um, lesser and greater uh, effects, mostly lesser, <laughs> as it goes. It's, very it's bad difficult. out there. <laughs> it's, bad, it's bad out there. And, you know, baseline for everything is the distance, is, is like you're, you're jumping into a long distance relationship. And that's, that's a tricky thing to navigate. Uh, that's, that's something that I know how to do or want to do so you know but it's i remember pre-pandemic when you started like online dating and it was just us texting like it's bad out there <laughs> yeah it's bad out there and that was like <laughs> it was bad out there then i i finally had like I, I do a lot of dating in my life in transition. Uh, there's this book here that you can purchase below. Um, <laughs> it's a very small book. I do a lot of dating and make a lot of steps. I start dating guys uh, and uh, hadn't really done much of that and made a lot of missteps, missteps uh, in relation to um, the people I was choosing and in relation to um, the way that I was being treated in a lot of regards to my being trans, like lowering my arm, whatever. I, I finally figured, I, I got a grasp on it all. I know I figured out how to do it in a way that like, feels good and like would hopefully find somebody that uh, I connect with. Um, you know, I, I finally had a grasp on dating and then everything turns upside down and it, suddenly the game is completely changed. Yeah. What do you do? What do you do? It's true. Um, okay, we have a couple more questions in the chat. Actually, one of them is more of a comment. Um, I will Please. read it. 
Uh, and then I think that'll probably take us to the end of this. So I'm going to read you two questions. And then if you have any closing things you want to say, and then we'll, we'll call it a night. Um, Ali says, are you working on any new projects that we can look forward to seeing in the future? Oh, I thought there was a second That's part. the end. No, that's the end of the question. <laughs> that's, one, that's one question. Answer oh, okay. that question. Okay. Uh, always, always, yes. Um, I... Uh, um, goodness um it's hard to talk on any of that because um i don't now that i've gotten grown used to um i guess making making a book like i don't know you know i made i, I finished this whole project before i uh even conceived of putting it uh out there to the public um you know uh the instant gratification of um putting yourself out there and talking about the projects that you're working on seems really great um i also know that if i talk about the things that I'm working on a little too early, uh, that'll actually be bad for, for me. Um, I, I don't, uh, yes, I am working on things. Um, it's hard, it's hard not to, uh, it's, it's once, once you get into the swing of things, I, I really like, I like making things. I like making things. Uh, I want to, I want to make things that people connect with. I want to make things that I connect with that like make my heart sing. I want to be like making something that like I'm passionate about. Um, I'm very excited for the, for this, uh, book to actually finally be out, um, par partially so like that part of my brain, like I can I can file that away, it's out into the world, I can move on with my life uh, and really um, focus more in on um, those other projects. Um, so I, I, so I'm, I'm very excited um, um, in, in a lot of regards. Um, unfortunately, yeah, it's, it's too early to say anything that uh, in particular that I'm working on. Uh, but I am, you know, working on uh, Big City Greens in, in the animation world, and it's a great show, and watch it. Okay. Um, super Late Bloomer animated. When? Get Adult Swim on the line. <laughs> God, that would be incredible. That would be incredible. Um, I would love that. I would love that. Let's make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, and then I think this is going to be the last one, but it's it's good. I'm excited about this question. Who is your favorite cat from Cats 2019? <laughs> Thank you for emphasizing 2019. Um, Mr. Mistopheles. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Um, the, the, the original Conjuring cat. No, wait, no. But Skimble Shanks has the, 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 the steel, the, 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 the top number. The, 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 the tap dancing is incredible. Um, it's... Ah, uh, but Skimble Shanks has my heart. But then Gus, oh wait, no, no, Gus. Gus the theater cat. I take it all back. Uh, he, it's awkward. Do you think that uh, Ian McKellen is going to just die at any given moment if he's on screen? He, he, <laughs> he gives himself away into uh, becoming a cat so immensely. Uh, at one point, he just like starts like singing meow, meow, meow uh, in the background of a scene. It's, 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 it's incredible. Um, I want to know more about him, honestly. If we talk about um, the uh, the stage production, uh, uh, D uh, Demeter, uh, Demeter, um, mostly not a very um, for, like uh, important cat into in in the overarching scheme of uh, the the um, them trying to get into the heavy side layer, but incredible makeup, impeccable makeup. She's adorable, um, worth looking into. Um, I can think of no better way to end this conversation than I on that going. note. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even touch on Rum Tum Tugger. Oh uh, no. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. We can we can well, I'll leave that for my TED talk. There you go. Okay. We did it. I think so. Thank you everybody for, for submitting questions. Um Thank you. I will Thank you for Yeah, I think um book soup person might yep. Okay. <laughs> Yes, thank you so much everyone for joining us. Thank you, Julia, thank you, Sheena. This was such a lovely conversation. Everyone, please get your signed copy of My Life in Transition at the green button right below from Book Soup. I don't know if any other place has signed copies, but we do. And, oh, perfect, so yep, you gotta get them here. And this, someone asked if this is being recorded. It is recorded. You will be able to rewatch it right here as well as our YouTube channel in the future. And thank Beautiful. you everyone, have a wonderful night. Thank you so much. Thanks.